Oh, what a year, everybody. What a year, man. I mean, <laughs> on yeah, on Christmas, I, I saw a story where in Florida, the weather was so cold that the iguanas froze up in the trees and they were falling out of the trees. <laughs> I heard that. Frogs falling from the sky. Of course. Of course. Isn't that scripture? Isn't that the end of days, Tony? <laughs> now, now they're talking about a new strain. <laughs> like, oh, my God. oh, man. Like if Stephen King were going to set up a sequel, you know, in the last <laughs> Oh, my God, there's a new strain. It's from London. <laughs> Just when you thought it was safe to hug each other again. Right. <laughs> COVID-21. Oh, man. The horror story where you wear the mask. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it is, it's tough to even make fun of it because there are people who are actually suffering. And if we can make one resolution, everybody, together on a serious note, just reach out to somebody who might be suffering or sick or depressed and just uh, you don't have to you don't have to open a heart you know your heart or anything just say eh, I was thinking about you what are you doing if we could all do that for yeah. somebody I think that'd be a good way to start the year yeah yeah so yeah sure it. yeah we got through um, so much this year I mean rioting in the streets and uh, the election is that over? Is that still going? I don't know. <laughs> oh. You know, I what I don't like about politics is all of the mudslinging. You know, it's like, you know, tell me what you're about. You don't have to go. If everyone's just, uh, you know, imagine if commercials were like that. And instead of Toy Toyota telling you about their new car, their commercial went Ford. <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> they call it an escort. No one goes with you. <laughs> We're Toyota. We approve of this message. <laughs> uh, so we've got uh, stimulus checks are coming. I think those are being printed right now. So... Yeah, that's exciting. I don't know. I'm not an economist, but you, you can't just keep printing money, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's how you get inflation, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know. I'm going to be like, I always thought I'd live in a million dollar house. I just didn't realize it'd be a two bedroom fixer upper. <laughs> <laughs> on the news they showed them printing hundred dollar bills <laughs> and even even ben franklin's face was like well we got through um uh, we did they, they, they finished baseball that was good they finished bass and now we got football that's supposed to make us feel better right uh, <laughs> And then on Thanksgiving, you go to turn on football, and one of the games was canceled, something about a virus. And the other game <laughs> featured the Washington football team. <laughs> I give up. Yeah, for the rest of you, that used to be the Redskins, and now they, they don't. I've been through a season on a team with no name. <laughs> but we still can't win any games. <laughs> and that should be, uh, uh, it felt good to get out of the blame. I don't know. <laughs> We're working on it. We're working it. Well, it's good. I can't believe Christmas is over. We got one day left in the year. Uh, you know who's probably uh, happy about the holidays being over and Christmas and Hanukkah? The delivery people. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> they were working. Oh, and you know what? They couldn't even get out to pee, to go to the bathroom anywhere because <laughs> everything's closed. There, there's a, a true, yeah, there's a true story in London or in England. There was uh, an Amazon guy who got, who got out and took a dump on someone's property. <laughs> Yeah, for, it's a true story. Yeah, you can Google that. Yeah, he would have gotten away with it, but he stopped to take a picture to prove. <laughs> and then they had 30 days. I don't know how it worked, but. <laughs> yeah, well, it's good. I The thing that I am most grateful for is my wife, Patty. I yeah. every day. Yeah. I'm so grateful to be with her. Hey, and Patty. yeah, she went through, a. you know, when you 
when you um, you know tie your fate to a comic, that's a rocky road. <laughs> <laughs> she did it. She did it. And now we're back. And now this year, I'm back to that same you know kind of tense feeling that we used to have. It'll, it'll it'll come back. And by the way, the Renaissance followed the Dark Ages. So I think that we're going to see uh, just a rejuvenation and and maybe we'll look back in 2020 was the year that we all kind of <laughs> saw things more clearly, the people we love and the things we're grateful for. Like yeah. when Tony asked you to name something you're looking forward to, someone just wrote hugging people for real, right? <laughs> it's so simple. Yeah. So um, how about this? I'll uh, leave you with a little musical something here and playing a lot of guitar. I want to do something for my mom, speaking of uh, people I'm Amen. grateful for. Um, when I was growing up, uh, Neil Diamond was one of her favorite people. She had like a Neil Diamond crush. Everybody had a Neil Diamond crush. <laughs> it would be un-American not to. But when you listen to uh, Neil Diamond, sometimes you have no idea what he's talking about, but he's so committed that you just you just stick in there with him, you know? Like, You ever read the story about a frog who dreamed of becoming a king? king. <laughs> and he became one. <laughs> and he said, I am to no one there. Nobody listen, not even a chair. <laughs> My story is the same one. What the? What are we talking about, John? <laughs> Don't. Don't worry, he ties it all together in the chorus. <laughs> I cry, I am. Kaboom, Shazam. <laughs> and no one will not eat your green eggs and ham. <laughs> I'm just a tad posted. <laughs> All right, how about one more? Oh, thank you, guys. Thank you. He came a man on my birthday, the 3rd of June, says Patty Jenkins. <laughs> no kidding. Welcome, is Patty. Right, someone, else, someone else we can't live without here. All right, I'll leave you with one more thing. Uh, did you know <clears throat> that there is no such thing as Kokomo? Yeah, <laughs> no. true. Not, not in the Caribbean. They, they made it up. There's, there's Kokomo, Indiana. You, been there. You think, have you been there? Yeah. You think the Beach Boys were talking about that, Daryl? <laughs> no yeah. mountains and no beach. <laughs> A Kmart if you're lucky. <laughs> it's so cold you almost don't want to make your parole. <laughs> Way down in cold. Pittsburgh and Dayton, come on, don't be hating. <laughs> South End and Carmel, can't you hear the cowbells? Warsaw and Munster, kind of like a dumpster down in Kokomo. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, thank you guys for coming out. It really is, uh, really warms my heart that you all chose to spend New Year's Eve with us. And before I forget, a shout out to my sister in law, Susie, who's in Big Bear. She, it's her birthday, everybody. And she works 720 hours a week for the hospital. <laughs> oh, not even sure there are that many. And um, by the way, um, our magician, I should have already communicated. I had so much going on. Nancy Norton, if you are listening right now, our magician is on his way to a friend's house because he has Spectrum Cable. Just <laughs> it, it, to say that he does not have any internet right now. So Does that mean I have to learn magic? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? This is actually a great segue because your next comedian happens to be a registered nurse in addition to being a very funny comedian who's a regular at the uh, Comedy Works. She's been uh, all across the country doing keynote speaking. Put your hands together for my friend, Nancy Norton. Woo! Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad. I just stole this microphone from my son's gaming computer because my microphone <laughs> was glitching out. And I'm like, I don't care where you are in your game. I grabbed it and I'm so glad. 
<laughs> hey, happy new year almost, everybody. Happy new year. Happy new year. Happy new year. Um, full disclosure, and, and yes, let's give a shout out and, and love to all the healthcare workers out there. I, by the way, I'm not working as a registered nurse anymore. I got out of nursing for the same reason a lot of people got into it, to save lives. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. I should never, I should never have gone into nursing. It was not meant for me to do. Uh, I, 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 my mother is a nurse and she tricked me. And so Jason, your sister, is she, is she a nurse? She is. And so uh, is your mom a nurse? Cause sometimes that's how, how it works. Either your mom's a nurse or your dad's an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> Are they there? Oh, sorry. Okay. Sorry about that. It's an intervention. This turns out it's an intervention. So my mom hates that joke too. Your father is not an alcoholic, Nancy. He just buys bourbon by the case because it is economical. <laughs> he is an economic. It's totally different. Nancy. My mom, I have one of those moms. Actually, she doesn't yell very often. She's more of a singing. She's the singing mom. Anybody else have one of those? Hi, sweetie. How are you? <laughs> Don't tell me your real feelings. I can't handle those. <laughs> Let's keep it here up, okay? Let's keep it here up, all right? Now, Nancy, you have some anger. I don't know why. <laughs> I have no vices. I don't know why you want to have a cocktail and get out of control. But I have no <laughs> vices. I mean, I used to smoke, but only when I was pregnant. <laughs> I wish that was a joke. <laughs> my mother smoked through every single pregnancy, and there were a lot of them. Every, every photo I have of my mom, she has a cigarette in her mouth, a baby shirt on with an arrow, just kind of cries. <laughs> my dad right next to her, Budweiser arrow. <laughs> Whose water's going to break first? <laughs> And that she never told me to be a nurse like her. It was sort of programming through gifts and toys. And I noticed I'm doing the same thing with my son, which I, I, I bet a lot of you are surprised I actually have a minor child in my home at this age. At this, I mean, you know I'm an older comic because my name is Nancy. <laughs> Nancy. They haven't made a Nancy since 1964, kids. Mm -hmm. I'm not a late model Nancy. I do, I have a teenage son. Uh, when he was a toddler, his first words were, hot flash. <laughs> he would see my neck turn red and then he'd run put himself in a timeout <laughs> that's actually efficient parenting that is very helpful so I was, I'm a single mom I'm a single stay away from home mom <laughs> better this way thank you yeah. <laughs> but yeah my mom and I'm I notice I'm doing the same to him I'm programming him through gifts and toys right so you don't tell him you manipulate you manipulate. He's going to be an engineer because I give him nothing but Legos, Lincoln Logs, and Minecraft. And my mom, what did she give me to be a nurse? She gave me like leftover, you know, gauzes and needles from the hospital. And <laughs> the girls got dolls, dolls that wet, dolls that cried. I got a doll that choked and then she died. <laughs> sad Christmas as a sad Christmas. Anybody else ever drag that half a CPR doll? <laughs> Try and save it. He went towards the little dolly white light, which turns out is the light from the Easy Bake Oven. <laughs> <laughs> Who left that on? Oh. Kids, did anybody else have the Easy Bake with the light bulb, kids? <laughs> yeah, testify, testify. Yeah, I had the, I, hey, actually, I'm so old. My first Easy Bake Oven was a wood burning. <laughs> it was made of cast iron you had to get up extra early and chop lincoln logs to feed that fire <laughs> first you had to steal your brother's lincoln log you had to army crawl over to his cabin and get one of the onesies around the window like a weird jenga game kind of <laughs> you had to steal your other brother's gi joe survival hatchet and tick, 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 tick. <laughs> cornbread <laughs> Came with cornbread, kids. That's right. That's Ozark. That's Ozark Easy Bake. <laughs> I'm from the Ozark Mountains. Can you hear it? Yeah. Hear it in my twang a little bit. I got a little bit of Ozark going on here. I, I was uh, raised in the Ozarks. I know you're curious. Which trailer park? Well, <laughs> I'll tell you, not everybody in the Ozarks lives in a trailer park, all right? That is a huge misconception. There is a huge waiting list. 
<laughs> you don't just get in there. You think you just get in there. You have to earn it to show that you deserve it. You start small with a pickup truck and a camper shell and you build and you dream. <laughs> you get a vision board and you put a double white on there and you manifest that. <laughs> like I manifested a double wide. Everybody, air clap for me. I got a double wide. <laughs> Looks like we made it. <laughs> hey, things do not always go well. Watch what you pray for, folks. You've all seen that half a trailer going down the highway. <laughs> that there's an Ozark divorce. <laughs> that's a sad part of my program that's a wide load that is a wide wide emotional load right there oh my, oh my god those red flags are on there for a reason you know stay back 15 years we are a mess i've been through two divorces so i'm down to a quarter of a trailer <laughs> hold it out here i'm out here in boulder colorado i'm here in boulder colorado in my garage behind my quarter trailer and do not feel bad for me you know the value went up exponentially when i started calling her a tiny house <laughs> i am rich i am rich uh, ozarks to boulder i am a redneck vegetarian i do have a cookbook i'd like to offer in the lobby, if anybody wants to meet me in the lobby after the show, <laughs> some merch. I got, the, I got the Ozark Vegan Cookbook. It is all meth recipes. <laughs> <laughs> have you tried? Have you tried the meth? Uh, it's hard to stop. That's all I'm saying. It's delicious. I, I had to uh, make a sequel to my cookbook, Comfort Foods You Can Eat With or Without Teeth. <laughs> is that too mean for New Year's Eve? Is that too mean? Did anybody else find it ironic you cannot say the word meth without your teeth? Hard <laughs> <laughs> to score. Go down to the gas station, try and score you some MEP. <laughs> you got any MEP? You know what they do? They hand you a map to a rehab center. <laughs> that is that is God's divine rehab plan for you. Once the teeth run out, you get the, you get the map to the rehab center. I'm amusing myself. Let's move on. Uh, <laughs> did y'all even know I was talking to you this whole time? I do have an easy bake eye. I don't know. If I, I, I seriously, when I talk to people, a lot of times they kind of look over their shoulder. Uh, this eye, she's a drifter, kids. Nance has got a drifter. I got no depth perception. I just park by sound. <laughs> I blame it on I blame it on the second generation Easy Bake with the light bulb. If any of you had the one with the light bulb, kids, some of you young ones don't understand. In our day, light bulbs got hot, <laughs> incandescent. <laughs> you can't cook with an LED. You'll be there all day and just <laughs> we're cooking with two hundred watt bulbs, staring at it through a piece of glass. <laughs> Yeah, I won't let you look at an eclipse going over, but you could stare at that 100-watt bulb for an hour and a half. Try <laughs> your eyeball. A lot of us went easy bake blind. I don't know if you <laughs> ever cooked by smell. It's not easy. You got you know, you learn though. You learn. Is that my cake or is that my cornea? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever tried to smell your own cornea? Oh, not easy. You got to. You kind of got to do a like a little rainbow arc and breathe in. It's, it's it's more challenging than trying to smell your own breath i don't know if you've if you've tried that now that is easy isn't it that's easy when you wear the the covid mask you remember, remember when you thought it was other people <laughs> you're at the grocery store going man somebody's got some bad hangover breath <laughs> you need a mask mint <laughs> I got that's one of my COVID inventions. I've got the the Pez dispenser mask <laughs> mint. It's like it's like aromatherapy, man. It changes your whole world, your whole day. It's a beautiful experience. I actually sometimes I do put essential oil right here. I got a couple other. I got a couple other. I'm gonna go ahead and share them with you. I, I got a couple other Ozark inventions. I got the Ozark. Uh, you know, never worry about the toilet paper running out. We got the Ozark bidet. Uh, I said bidet, oh, sir. Yeah. That's right. You can oh, make yeah. it yourself. Pretty easy. Just run the garden hose in through the window. Oh! oh. <laughs> Set the nozzle on flowers. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to hurt yourself. 
Gentle. <laughs> gentle with yourself, okay? Better than a shower massage. Anybody get a shower massage? Ever get a shower massage? Handheld model? Thank you, God. Is that too graphic? <laughs> <laughs> that is a nice tool. Yeah. Three settings, spray, massage, recently divorced. <laughs> I've got the power. Yeah. <laughs> All I'm saying is there's a direct relationship between my water bill and my happiness. <laughs> Very happy. <laughs> Landlady is pissed because she said, she said utilities included. That's on her. That's on her. <laughs> hey, you guys, if you see a single mom out there with a, with a male toddler, help us out. I could have really used some help back in the day when I was trying to potty train my son. I didn't know you guys don't really use that little flap in your underpants. That would have helped me so much. If you would have told me, <laughs> my poor son, I'm like, honey, it looks like you got to go left and then right back, right. And then back left. And then, your pants, honey. That's okay. No, you did your best. You get yourself a prize out of that treasure chest, young man. It took a while before he could figure that out. He had to stand by the sink to hit the toilet. Uh, full transparency. I did not, I did not birth my son in my forties. I adopted him or as he says, I bought him. Which <laughs> it's not, it doesn't work that way. Although I did have a Groupon, but I will say <laughs> it was a journey of love. If you are adopted or have adopted kids, uh, I actually spent six months in Kathmandu, Nepal. My son's from Nepal, which is pretty far away. I used to say it's all the way around the world. And then I realized, wait a minute, all the way around the world. That's right back here. <laughs> it's like I adopted my neighbor's kid. <laughs> you would appreciate because he's also a teenager. <laughs> with ADHD. Anybody oh. else a teenager with ADHD? Oh. Fun times. My son also doesn't just have ADHD. Uh, on his report card, has a couple ADHFs. Um, <laughs> algebra. We're not, we're not focusing real well on this virtual thing. I, we, we're actually doing pretty well during, we're, we just keep, you know, his door closed and I installed a mail slot, you know, like for the male, <laughs> male teenager. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, you, you just, you can slot, you spell it any way you want. It doesn't matter. You can fit a pizza through there, a Wi-Fi code, $20 bills. <laughs> His son is keeping me, he keeps me young. I will say this. My, actually, I'm going to tell you a joke because I don't do jokes. I don't know if you noticed. <laughs> My son, I try to get away with it. I'm doing comedy without any jokes. My son actually writes jokes. He told me this. Mom, you just tell funny stories. I write jokes. So yeah. here it is. I told him I would tell it because I, I gave him 20 bucks through the mail slot. <laughs> <laughs> what do you see when aliens get diarrhea? Oh, geez. Mysterious oh. crap circles. <laughs> <laughs> Did I get $10 back or what? <laughs> oh. <laughs> he's, he's pretty funny, actually. Uh, he keeps me humble. We're both artists, so he loves to draw on his legs uh, to make them look like mine. <laughs> spider veins, spider veins. Jason, you're not the only one that can do song parodies. Hang on. Goes wherever a spider can, spins a web, any size. Wraps of blue all over your thighs. Oh yeah. She's got a spider vein now. He's got a spider vein now. It's driving you insane. <laughs> On ice. You guys, do air. Quotes, I'm embarrassed if you do. Like Can't leave me like that. Cheers, everybody. Here's my Ozark goblet. Cheers. Wow. Look at I'm having a mocktail and a cocktail. <laughs> Well, I sense that it's almost time for closure. That's so funny. And I want to thank you all. I really want to thank you for joining in and connecting in your rectangle. What? Muted. Nancy, I muted you. I'm so sorry. Uh oh. <laughs> Power of the moderate. Oh my gosh. I was trying to protect you, Nancy. And the person talking was right next to you, and it made you new. Sorry. <laughs> You're still muted. You're still muted. Oh, my God. You guys should have heard my closer. <laughs> oh, you know what? I, all I was saying really was thank you for connecting, with, you know, in the hearts and the funny bones and everything. And 
Uh, go get my album, Fourth of Three. You don't have to buy it. Just give it a thumbs up on the Pandora and help old Nance this uh, 2021. Fireworks are going off. That is a sign. We're having closure. Y'all, peace and love. Peace out. Thank you, Jason. <laughs> All right. Nancy Norton, everybody. I am so sorry, Nancy. <laughs> How long was I muted? Oh, just for your entire closing bit that's all <laughs> did you did you hear the spider vein song yes I, yes yeah the spider vein song was awesome is and that then... why you muted me because i was off key I was... <laughs> <laughs> no because i'm the only one who does song parodies here and i'm gonna tune into that <laughs> etc thanks again y'all yeah thanks nancy all right a little love nancy norton you got a lot of comments in the uh, comment section too, Nancy, about uh, especially about the uh, massager and the <laughs> shower. But uh, yeah, Terry Gamson said she couldn't survive trailer life. She tried. And Paula Feinberg, she uh, easy baked brownies. I think that's oh, like brownie. And then smoked brownie. them. And then smoked them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we got to keep this train rolling because at nine, we, we're going to have the East Coast countdown. And um, we've got a great lineup, uh, so I want to get everybody their fair share. So your next comedian, I worked with him on a cruise ship uh, about a year ago in the in the before times, and um, he was so good. Afterward, I asked him to do a trick for me on the stairway, and he's like, "Oh, sure!" And he goes, "Everybody, gather around!" <laughs> and just we were surrounded by people. I'm like, "This is a pro," and he just moved here from New York. Please put your hands together for my friend, Ben Nimzer. Hey guys, wow, thanks so much. Hey, there he is. I'm so happy to be here. I made it. We had some internet issues, but I had a friend with a studio and look, here I am. Uh, but we're gonna do some magic and I am gonna need some help. He introduced me as a comedian. I'm a comedy magician. I'll try to be funny, but we'll mostly just do magic. Uh, but I see some of you have drinks in your shot, so why don't I pour myself a drink? This is a uh, non-alcoholic, but some uh, Whole Foods brand LaCroix yeah. right over here. And I am going to need some people to help me out. So I'm going to let you know if we bring you onto Spotlight, have fun, react, enjoy. I'm not going to do anything to embarrass you. I already see one person in the private comments just asked me a question, and they said, what's that on your shirt? Let me come a little closer so you can see. You see, I have a, an envelope safety pinned to the lapel of my shirt. And it's the strangest thing. I had a dream last night and I woke up in a cold sweat and I said, oh, Jason's show. And I had this clear image and it was so vivid. I wrote everything down, sealed it in an envelope and I'll share it with you guys before I leave. And I'm looking through the names of the people who are in the Zoom and some of them, Matt, it's perfect. You guys are gonna see what I mean. But let's get started. I need somebody to help me with a card trick. So guess what? We can see you. Raise your hand like this. It'd be great if there's maybe a group of two, but maybe one person is fine. And Jason's going to go ahead and select somebody at random with their hand up like this and bring you in and add you into the spotlight so that everybody can see you. So Jason, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and just add anybody you like into the spotlight. And we're going to see if we can get a volunteer. Cool. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Hi, how are you? Hi, Julia. Uh, Julia. Julia, you're up. Everybody can see you, Julia. <laughs> Say hello. <laughs> I just want to make sure that you're listening. Okay. Um, first of all, I'm going to switch the camera and crush the soda can. There we go. And we're going to get the close-up view here so you can see everything. Now, here's the deal. I'm going to go with my cards like this. Uh -huh. And any time you like, you just say the word stop. And I will go nice and slowly. There's no rush. <laughs> Be kind. <laughs> uh, stop. Right here. Julia. Yeah. You're happy with the spot right here? Okay, good. And I'm going to show this to the camera. I'm going to turn my head, but everybody else get a good look at this. Can you see what it is? Yes. Yes, okay. And we'll put that somewhere back in the middle. Red card. Boom. Oh, did you see that? There was one red card in there as I cut the cards. I saw it. Which is crazy. Uh. Because if we go and look to see what the one red card is, Somehow, it changed into the card that you just picked. Oh. Let's try it again. Let's try it again. I'm going to place the card right here, and that's not going to leave your sight. It's not going to go out of frame. And uh, what was your name, Julia? 
<laughs> on the bottom of your screen, right? Uh, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go like this and just say the word stop anytime you like. Stop. Okay. Is this a good spot or would you like to go more? Uh, let's go a little bit more. Let's go yeah. more. Okay. So here's yeah. what I'm going yeah. to go like this with my thumb and anytime you like, you say stop again, stop. okay? Okay. Oh, wait, yes. Starting <laughs> now. <laughs> Here, exactly. So it's not going to be the card I can see. It'll be this one here. Are you okay with that? I want the other one, but okay. You want to go more? No, no, no. That one's okay. Okay, this one's right. Let's see what we got. Okay, the four. All right, it's your job, Julia, to wave your hand across the screen and say the magic words. One card, turn red. Go ahead, say that. One card. Turn red. <laughs> You're good. You could be in Star Wars. This is like, these are not the droids you are looking for, right? Check it out. Julia, you did it. There's one card that turned red. Wait, hold on. Let me look. There should be one. <laughs> oh, oh, that's so embarrassing. You know, it's not your fault. It's my fault, Julia. I told you to say the wrong thing. I said one card turned red, but we already have one card. I should have said a second card turns red, right? Okay. What was the second card? It, am I supposed to tell you? No, you can tell me. Yeah, go ahead. The four of hearts. You know what, Julia? You're just so good at this. I think it worked anyway. <gasps> oh, my God. Let's give a big round of applause for Julia. Ladies oh, and gentlemen. You out of the spotlight. That was amazing. That was amazing. <laughs> We're going to get back to this in a second. Let me just, uh, we'll get rid of the red card. Um, and... Ooh. Uh, Julia, there's no way I could have known that you were going to yeah. pick that card. And I have this in front of me. And we're going to get back to you at the very end. Um, but now I want to see... Oh, by the way, um, Julia, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just exit you out of the spotlight for a second. And we're going to bring you back in a little bit. Um, <laughs> there we go. Okay. So, by the way, last time I did this, somebody said to me, they're like, oh, I think I know how this works. There's really only one possible explanation if you think about what went down. And they said, you know, oh. time travel. I bet what Ben did is he traveled back in time, switched the card on the glass, traveled back in time, and bloop, was right in the same moment. Perfect. And I thought about that, and I was like, you know, that would be cool if I could actually time travel. And I was starting to think about all the cool things I would do if, if time travel were really a thing. And so as I was looking, let me bring this close. You see the 365 brand Whole Foods. I said, what I, the first thing I would do I think, is I would travel back in time to before I opened my drink. <laughs> Get it out! But if I could really travel back in time, I might travel back in time to before the <laughs> oh, wow. If I could really travel back in time, I would travel back I can't it was ever <laughs> <laughs> and if I could do time travel, that's what I would do. Thanks so much. Yeah. Yeah. I have one more quick one before I get out of here. I got one more quick one before I get out of here. Four hearts. And I'm going to need three random people to help me out. Now, here's the deal. If I chose you, you would be like, oh, I know how this works. They're in on it. They're in cahoots. So, Jason, I'm going to put you in charge of bringing onto Spotlight. You know what, let's bring Julia back because we already used her and she was fantastic. And then why don't we bring two more random people? I need two random people. Okay, volunteers. Daryl Holly. What? You guys want to okay. be a part of this? <laughs> okay. All right, All right. Daryl okay. Holly. Anybody else want to be a part of this? <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh. We got Patty Jenkins going. All right. All right. So, hi, your name's Patty? Yes. That's oh, I think I, I'll get you going here. Sorry, Ben. Oh, that's okay. Okay. Um, Patty, P-A-T-T-Y, got it. Okay. Hey, Patty, so here's the deal. Um, we've all tried a lot of new foods since the pandemic has started, right? And right. maybe people are experimenting with different dishes. Everyone's doing these sourdough starters, right? So I want to know, what's a food that you've enjoyed since the pandemic has started? Maybe something you ate very recently. Nuts. <laughs> nuts. <laughs> That's nuts. Okay, Patty, I had a feeling. You are what you eat, you're nuts. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Kid because I love it. 
And then how about of the of the two people right below you? I see a very fancily dressed couple. What are your names? You. Yeah, that's you. Holly and Daryl. Yes. And who would like to help me with this? One or the other. You just me. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Say your name one more time, a little louder. I just didn't hear it the first time. What? What? Daryl and Holly. Daryl and Holly. Holly. Oh, Holly. Okay. I thought I, Holly. I couldn't quite hear you right away. So, Holly, I want to know from you a TV show. Not just any TV show, one that's like, I'm going to consider it a guilty pleasure. That means that you might not want to let everybody know that while the pandemic was going on, you watched the whole thing from beginning to end. Like for me, I watched all of Cobra Kai in two weeks. Kind of embarrassing. Can you think of a TV show that you watched since the pandemic started from beginning to end? It's Creek. Shit's Creek. Good choice. And they totally like swept the... Uh, the uh not the tonys yeah. uh, the emmys right yeah there was like the Shits creeks emmys that's amazing and then last but not least julia my julia like the paul mccartney <laughs> song the dad will appreciate that he's in the audience julia i want to know you chose a card already and then when i went like this and we stopped you said no 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 i'm gonna go a little bit more yeah and then you went a little bit more and then we chose that card and that's good we have a card we're done Yes. Unless you want to change a third time, it's totally up to you. What do you guys think? Change it or stick to it? Don't listen to them. It has to do with what you say. Don't be bullied, Julia. Don't be bullied. Yeah, 2021, I'm not going to be bullied. We're going to stay with that card. You're going to stay with the card. Yes. Good. You know what? Let me just show you. I'm going to step up to the camera here because everybody thinks that maybe like the whole deck is the four of hearts. Can you see that like every single card is different? It's not like the same card over and over again, right? And this is the same deck that has been in your sight the whole time. And the craziest thing is you picked a card, you went further and then you changed it. And then I gave you the option to change again. And you said no. And what was the card last time? It was the three of hearts? No, four of hearts. Four, four of hearts, okay. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Let's see. I don't even remember what I wrote down last night. That's how long it goes. Let me come, I want you to see this. I'm gonna, my head's gonna be out of frame, but it's so important that you see this part. Oh, no way. Yes way. <laughs> yeah, no way. I'm gonna open this up and inside is just one piece of paper that's never gonna leave your sight and it says the word prediction. Coincidence? I think not. <laughs> Younger people are looking at me like, why is Jonah Hill doing magic tricks? <laughs> 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 the weirdest thing about this prediction, look, I don't even have any markers in there. The weirdest thing about this prediction is the first thing I wrote last night is that Patty ate nuts. Patty! Oh, oh. oh get out. <laughs> I know. But maybe, oh maybe, maybe every what? single show that I do, there's somebody named Patty who eats nuts. Maybe that's not so impressive. Just a coincidence. That's why the other thing that I happen to write was that Holly watched Shit's Creek. Oh my uh, God. No. And you know what? I almost stopped there. And it's crazy. I gave you the chance to change your mind so many times. But I knew Julia. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, wow. Hey. Right. Okay. Thanks. Hey, Thanks so much. I hope you all had as much fun. Thank you so much for including me in this. This has been the coolest way to be here. You guys oh. are awesome. Thanks for being yeah. awesome. Thanks, Mom and Dad on the East Coast for staying up so late to watch. Me too. Yeah. Hi, Mom and Dad. Hi, hey guys. Thanks wow. so much. All right, everybody. Ben Nimzer, yeah. let him hear it. Ben. Woo. Woo. Man. Yeah. This is good. Yeah. yeah. He did this on the ship. He pulled something out of his wallet, and I was right next to him. I'm like, get out of here <laughs> yeah in the in the chat section uh diane resnikov said don't play poker with this guy <laughs> <laughs> and and then there was somebody ben who remembered us from the norwegian cruise line it was stephen Rissman. so hey stephen oh, so cool. hey, yeah pretty cool man 
there. All right. Well, fantastic. That that gave us a little, just that little something we were looking for on New Year's. You know, that between that and Tony dressed up like the orchestra conductor, those two things <laughs> yeah. are what did it yeah. for me. Okay. Well, let's get your next comedian up. He is also, well, Ben just moved here from the East Coast, and that's where his family is watching from. Hi, Nimzer family and Nimzer in laws. The uh, next comedian is a uh, big shot in New York. He has uh, been on the he's been on the Tonight Show. He's been on uh, Conan. He's got a, a dry bar comedy special. Put your hands together for the very funny Tony Deo. Woo All right. Woo hey Tony. Where's Tony? Where is he? Am I here? Yes. There I am. Thanks, Where's Jason. Sydney? And Tony, you do look fantastic. I was. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. <laughs> That's the exact camera shot that they do when the. Uh, yeah. I was going to mention yeah. the orchestra conductor for the. Uh, <laughs> uh, the Emmys, nice. uh, but this this is so much fun. Thank you for having me, and Jason. Thank you for putting me after the magician because that's always so easy to follow when guys make magic happen and then all i have to do is tell jokes so i hope everyone should buckle in to be very disappointed because nothing i do is going to top the magic tricks but you know i'll give it a shot anyway so I will tell you guys this uh and thank you for coming uh before i was a comedian i was a school teacher and oh. My favorite story from teaching school, this kid was being expelled and his dad told me that he wasn't that worried about it because Albert Einstein was expelled from school too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. yeah, so that's true. That's because that Einstein true. was smarter than everyone else <laughs> <laughs> and he couldn't handle it. He was being expelled for flapping his wiener out the bus window. <laughs> they have uh they have taken two different pathways in life <laughs> so i will uh i will tell you guys this i'm astounded by technology and what it can do for us uh last winter i installed a smart thermostat in my apartment and then i went to cleveland and that thermostat knew from my iphone's location that i was traveling and it turned down my heat for me which I thought was amazing. Here's who did not think it was amazing. Yeah. My wife and child. <laughs> <laughs> who were still here in New York City and came home to an apartment that was 45 degrees. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know how smart that thermostat is, but it's a very loyal thermostat. <laughs> The king of the castle's away. You villagers light a fire if you need to. <laughs> I, uh, I love the smart device. I actually, I, uh, I bought a smart scale. That was a mistake. Yeah, I, I don't know why I thought I needed a new scale. My old scale worked just fine. Told me my weight, didn't judge me. <laughs> I was like, ah, it's just a number, Tony. Don't worry about it. You know what? You're right, Scale. Thank you. <laughs> but uh, I wasn't content with that. I wanted the scale of the future, and I got it. And it uh, syncs with an app on my iPhone to help me track my weight trend. <laughs> I'm using technology to bully myself. <laughs> <laughs> It's mean to me in this weird <laughs> passive aggressive way. <laughs> like, you know, not many of us have been real healthy over uh, the last year. I hadn't been on in a while. I got on the scale and I gained so much weight. That scale actually thought I might be someone else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A little, uh, little window popped up on the iPhone app. It said, Is this Tony? <laughs> <laughs> that's a very depressing moment when you realize that a computer has run all of the mathematical possibilities and decided you know what there's no way this is the same guy that was standing here four months ago it's impossible <laughs> uh, yeah. I found out they do make uh, smart refrigerators now uh, yeah I don't think so <laughs> I, uh, I learned my lesson with the scale 
they say <laughs> smart fridges will let you know when you're running out of something. I, I, I don't need that. You know, I know the uh, fridge is going to be mocking me behind my back. Probably be texting the scale. <laughs> Fred, you'd be like, you're not going to believe it. This guy needs ranch dressing again. <laughs> and the uh, scale would be like, what? Pig o -M emoji, LOL, pig emoji. <laughs> I need that. No, thank you. <laughs> I, uh, I do need to, uh, I, I need to do something. I went to my doctor for my annual physical and he agreed with my scale. He thinks I need to lose a few pounds. Um, but, uh, you know, so I thought I was doing okay. He's the doctor. He's got his charts and stuff. So I put myself on a little bit of a diet and here's what I've learned. Um, when you're trying to lose weight and you do step on that scale, there's no such thing as too naked. <laughs> <laughs> I get birthday suit naked. That's step one. Then I take my contacts out. <laughs> Blow my nose, trim my fingernails, go to the bathroom. <laughs> Exhale as hard as I can. <laughs> then I get on that scale. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to be healthier. I've, I'm trying to drink less. I, I just, I cannot drink like I used to when I was younger. It just hits me much harder. Like, have you ever been so hungover that your iPhone's face recognition doesn't even think it's you? <laughs> yeah. That was a new low point. <laughs> I didn't even believe it. I started trying to make I'm sober faces at my phone. I was like, come on, phone. And my phone was like, no, no, you're just making it worse. You don't deserve Facebook today. And my phone was right. You don't, you don't want to be on Facebook when you're hungover looking at everyone's fake perfect lives <laughs> like ah oh, look at that sarah just finished her seventh triathlon and i'm still drunk <laughs> uh, was not my new year's resolution <laughs> it's hard to be healthy as a comedian though because we keep very odd hours you know i come home very late at night i'm hungry i can't be expected to make good decisions at two in the morning but I, uh, I came home from a show uh, a while back and I was going to heat up a microwave dinner. And I looked on the back and they had two different sets of instructions for this microwave dinner based on the wattage of electricity that your microwave uses. Mm -hmm. You know, if I had my life together enough to know the wattage of electricity <laughs> my microwave uses... I uh, I wouldn't be heating up mac and cheese at two in the morning. That's for sure. <laughs> Try and eat healthier. Uh, I don't recommend it. It's terrible. <laughs> don't even bother with the New Year's resolution. Um, I have gotten the point though. I can recognize a terrible healthy recipe as soon as I see it. And here's how you know. Anytime they're trying to replicate something awesome with a healthy make-at-home version, it's going to taste like a dumpster fire. <laughs> I still look at the recipes, though. You know, they'll be like, hey, make this healthy alternative to Snickers bars right in your own kitchen. Oh, man. <clears throat> I love Snickers bars. Let's see how they did it. <laughs> In this recipe, we have replaced the chocolate that you love so much with pureed black beans. Uh, not even close. And instead of caramel nougat, we're using cantaloupe rinds and Elmer's glue. Oh, uh, looks like a Snickers bar. It tastes like sadness. You ever taste sadness? I have.
<laughs> so I have a uh, I have a little seven year old boy now, um, and I've learned this: uh, having a kid that that's the biggest decision you're ever going to make in your life. You have to be a hundred percent sure that it's something you want to do. My wife and I, we were a hundred percent sure. Actually, my wife was like ninety nine percent sure she wanted a baby, and I was one percent sure I wanted one. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I double checked her math. She was right. We were ready. That is indeed 100. I, uh, I love him to death, though. He's the light of my life. So cute, adorable. Looks nothing like me. <laughs> and people notice. Yeah, every once in a while, I'll get that he has your smile consolation prize. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when someone uh, says that a kid has your smile, here's what they're trying to say. I don't think that's your kid. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, it's interesting watching them grow up, though, because uh, they teach a lot of things to kids differently now than when I was young. Like, uh, I just found out I no longer sneeze properly. <laughs> Yeah, did you know that? They reinvented the sneeze. Like when I was a kid, you'd sneeze in your hands and then you go wash your hands and that was the end of that. Someone decided that was not hygienic enough. So now they teach kids to sneeze into their elbow mm -hmm. and then right. snot explodes from their wrist to their shoulder. <laughs> And I'm told that's more hygienic. <laughs> oh, really? I, don't know. I don't know about that. That kid over there, he can't even bend his arm from that booger cast he's wearing. <laughs> <laughs> this is a uh, this is a fun age though, because uh, they're learning everything, and you get to watch them learn these things right in front of you. Like my son just learned that he could lie to me. <laughs> Uh, which I find very amusing because he's terrible at it. <laughs> now he'll say to me, uh, Daddy, I haven't had a cookie yet. Don't ask Mommy. <laughs> <laughs> very smooth. <laughs> and a lot of parents would call him out on it. Use it as a teaching moment. Try to explain why you shouldn't lie. I know better than that. If I do that, he's just going to learn from his mistakes and become a better liar. <laughs> 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 that doesn't help me out. If I give him the extra cookie, I'm letting these little eyes slide for now so that he continues to be terrible at it. And then later on, I recognize the important ones. You know, like one day he's a, te a teenager. And he says, Dad, I'm not smoking weed. Don't ask my weed dealer. Still <laughs> <laughs> <Real> smooth. <laughs> I, uh, I would also feel guilty lecturing him about lying uh, because I lie to him all the time. And I didn't think I would. You know, when he was young, I had this idea in my head that I'd always be honest with him and I'd always tell him the truth and everything would work out because we were honest. And then one day, I had to get him to leave Chuck E. Cheese and that was the end of that. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever been in Chuck E. Cheese with a seven-year-old, uh, but if you tell him it's time to go, this is what you will not hear. Oh, let me grab my jacket. Where did I put that? <laughs> <laughs> so you lie to them, and they'll battle you on a little lie, so you have to go big. I told him we were leaving Chuck E. Cheese because the kitchen was on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Right out. Uh, I also had the realization recently, maybe he also knows when I'm lying. Maybe he is also letting these little eyes slide for now so that later on he recognizes the important ones. Like one day when I tell him, yeah, of course I've been saving money for you to go to college. <laughs> Don't ask mommy. Don't ask mommy. Let me get out of here in a second. I will, uh, I will tell you this. I've been married for 21 years now. 
And uh, I actually, I stopped wearing my wedding ring after 20 years. And I know what you're thinking. I still love my wife as much as I always have. She doesn't care. I just thought, uh, you know, 20 years, I did my time with the jewelry. <laughs> but a buddy of mine asked me, he's like, Tony, how is a, a woman that's attracted to you supposed to know that you're not available? Yeah, that hasn't really been a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Has not presented itself. Hey, you guys have been great. Thank you so much for letting me spend some time with you. I really appreciate it. Yeah. All right. All Tony right. Deo, everybody. Hey. Tony Deo. And we are right on schedule. I was worried that we might get off, but pros like Tony, they get the light. They know to do it, um, which is fantastic. And um, in the past, some of you have been good enough, like in the after party, you're, you say that I should charge more because we're bringing really the best comics in the country, which yeah. I do appreciate. I do, I do have my reasons <laughs> for this, though, um, to keep the price low so that we have more people and cast our net wide. But we do make it possible to donate. And, and I always flash this thing very quickly on the screen. So I'm going to talk over it this time, if I can find it. Because now I can't find. Oh, it's right here. Um, so before I bring up our our final comedian, there's the payment info. A shout out to my sister Shannon and Simi Valley, everybody. I never get to see her. Hi, sis. Love you. We're gonna see you soon. Um, our next show is on Saturday, January sixteenth, and we've already got two really good comics, and I'm gonna fill in the the rest um, in the next couple of days. Tony uh, from Fuegarita. Tony Winders, he said that he lost 10 pounds during COVID, Tony Deo. So, neener, neener. My wiener. Yeah, that was in the chat section. Paula, Paula Feinberg said that the balance of sound is good this time. Thank you, Paula. She's a regular. And Chad and Eileen, um, oh, I moved them over because they were asking about being a panelist. So I did appreciate that. We hadn't done that before, but they just they just messaged me saying, hey, we want to share our laughs. So we brought them over. The raising the hand thing, I really don't know. Hey, Chad. <laughs> the, the raising of the, see, they bring that kind of energy. Like, like, a, like a crowd in the distance kind of energy. We love it. Um, but yeah, that, that actually worked out. So in the future, if you come back, that's a good way to do it. And a whoop whoop from Ken wow. Gentry out in Pioneer Town. Okay. Woo, 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 Are you guys Pioneer ready for your Town. final comedian, Pioneer everybody? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Pioneer Town up by you guys. Uh oh, we got a, we got somebody. Oh, there you go. Gerald, Gerald, thank you for doing that. He was conscientious. He knew that his mic was <laughs> feedbacking. See, this is why we bring you guys in. We, we know you can handle yourselves. Okay, um, your final comedian, I love this guy. We go way back, Patty loves him too. He was a, I think he, I can't remember if he won the Boston Comedy Festival, but he's a big standout there. He had a residency at the Tropicana in Las Vegas. He is the spiritual advisor to the Tiger King. Put yes. your hands together for the Tommy Lama. Yes, yes. <laughs> Tommy. Where is he? Where are we, Tommy? Yeah, Tommy. Wait a second, you got to get the whole effect here. You what, Jason? I'm trying to find him. Just a second. You can't find me. Hold up there the line. I see him. There he is. Yay! Yeah. 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 Like I'd, like, I'd like to what? apologize for that introduction. Usually it's accompanied by a fog machine. I know. <laughs> what happened? What happened? It doesn't matter what happened. <laughs> what happened. What what matters is what's about to happen now. And <laughs> I'm excited. Uh, I, I, I started at the bottom and I'm gonna show you how to get there. <laughs> <laughs> I have worked on myself with years of therapy. And I know it's looked down upon, but it shouldn't just because it's been court ordered. <laughs> <laughs> and we need to go back to traditional uh, therapies like electroshock. 
And I know insurance may not cover it, but that's why I made my jumper cables available. <laughs> Many of us here have made mistakes in our lives. Some of you may be sitting next to them. <laughs> Are them. Fortunately for you, I'm from Brooklyn where people help people beat up other people. <laughs> My stepfather taught me that other people's problems are not your responsibility, and then he left. <laughs> he was a life coach. <laughs> life coaching is in my DNA. I, I I got it from my stepfather. He got <laughs> his stepfather. <laughs> Hopefully, one day my children will get it from their stepfather. <laughs> the tiny symbol for failure and success is the same. That's what my tattoo artist told me. <laughs> now, listen, we all struggle. So, you know, I, I, you know, a lot of us struggle in our relationships. In a, oh, many of us struggle in their relationship and, and instead of the three or four that we deserve. <laughs> <laughs> Which leads me to conclude that the problem with dating people half your age is that they get older. By a round of applause, how many here have heard of my competitor, Tony Robbins? <laughs> Loser. <laughs> Tony has a bunch of sexual harassment allegations against him. Mine are all proven. <laughs> what can they say? I put my body into my work. <laughs> Tony, uh, you know, says that he has a 20% uh, a success rate. That, that that's ridiculous. Uh, I, I I'm O for O. That's one hundred percent. Can't spell one hundred without zero. <laughs> Tony brags how athletes call him before the big game. They call me before the parole hearings. <laughs> they know I'm the only one that could give him the advice, compassion, and clean urine they need. <laughs> oh. oh boy. <laughs> he says the secret to success is to never give up. That's a lie. I'm undefeated in water polo. <laughs> because I never played water polo. <laughs> Dr. Phil tells you not to drink while you're pregnant. How are you supposed to get pregnant in the first place? <laughs> <laughs> I was the first one to advise people to drink before going to work. <laughs> Those that have listened have been so successful, they were told they could go home early. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Ferriss says you should have a four hour work week. I say start at your current job. <laughs> <laughs> Look, folks, if you want to uh, lose weight for the upcoming holiday, if New Year's, try the vodka cleanse. Because <laughs> <laughs> when you vomit, you release toxins <laughs> <laughs> and work out your abs. <laughs> <laughs> Will you black out? Probably. That's your body protecting you from embarrassing memories. <laughs> That's why no one remembers their 20s. <laughs> Western medicine has it wrong. We have to listen to our body's needs. And what does your body tell you it needs? 
they cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> You got a limited budget train meth. <laughs> we keep all out probably. That's because your body doesn't need them anymore. <laughs> it's a superfood. <laughs> and it's good for the economy because it's produced locally. <laughs> they say cigarettes are more addictive than heroin. I say make the switch. <laughs> Heroin is more considerate. No one suffers from secondhand smack. <laughs> we need to stop the war on drugs and start wars while on drugs. Start wars while on drugs. That way you kill two birds while stoned. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you that are not familiar with marijuana, it's the active ingredient in brownies. <laughs> <laughs> and brownies are a gateway drug. <laughs> the more dangerous substances like Taco Bell. <laughs> Look, folks, I know all about struggle. My mother abandoned me when I was 30. <laughs> I love Who would it. do that to a little boy? <laughs> My mother goes, Tommy, you need to get a job. I, I said, I have a job. I'm a stay at home child. I'm a stay at home so I, I, I joined a shelter for abused men. <laughs> <laughs> called Hooters. <laughs> but I, rele I left when I realized, like all religions, they were just in it for the money. <laughs> <laughs> so I began my uh, spiritual journey where I, I, I traveled most, most of South America, mainly Miami. <laughs> I got as far as Los Angeles. <laughs> now I know to some of you, Hollywood has a bad reputation of being a place where perverts trade for sexual favors, but there's also a dark side. <laughs> <laughs> the rent. <laughs> It's yeah. a place of Buddhism where people are not burdened by material possessions because they've been repossessed. <laughs> <laughs> LA is a place where I became one of Hollywood's most sought after models. <laughs> the before picture. <laughs> it's a spiritual place it's where, it, it's where I developed my psychotic abilities <laughs> I know some of you looking at me going well hey Tommy don't you mean psychic whatever <laughs> voice is a voice <laughs> Awesome. One of those voices told me to go to a land filled with knowledge. Uh -oh. Riverside. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. You may now refer to me by the title that was given to me by the, the great Maharashi, Yamaha Suzuki Toyota. Tommy <laughs> <laughs> <Kami> Lama. <laughs> <laughs> you feel that? I just cleansed the Zoom. <laughs> I am offering sessions after the show, one on one. <laughs> if you're a woman, two for one. <laughs> It makes a great anniversary gift. 
I'm also <laughs> offering $20 gift cards that I stole from Bloomingdale's. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to lead us through meditation right now. So what I'd like to do is all for you to close your eyes and imagine you're in the happiest place on earth. <laughs> Bakersfield, California. <laughs> Can you hear those gunshots? <laughs> no, you don't. The stitches get stitches. <laughs> now close your eyes deeper. Close your eyes. If you're blind, leave them open. <laughs> Relax. Inhale through your mouth. Exhale through your rectum. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, you have a choice. Now repeat after me. I am attractive. I am attractive. I am attractive. I am attractive. Statistically speaking. Statistically <laughs> speaking. I am not ugly. I'm not, I am I'm not, not ugly. ugly. I am visually challenging. Visually <laughs> challenging. I am not handicapped. I'm not handicapped. I'm not handicapped. No, no, no. I still deserve to park here. <laughs> this is the induction to your hypnosis. When I hit my chime again, you will have no recollection of what happened. No will you touch charges. <laughs> and you will tell you, I will quit smoking even if I have to start. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Welcome back. Oh my God. It is so important that we open up our heart center. And what gives our heart joy the most? Uh, bacon. Bacon. <laughs> bacon. It likes bacon so much that when it gets it, it stops what it's doing. <laughs> <laughs> Too much bacon may lead to constipation. But what is constipation? That's your body telling you it likes me eating so much. It doesn't want to let it go. <laughs> you don't believe me, have a prune. <laughs> See how your body feels about that. And it's important. There's a lot of misinf misinformation out there. We need to feed our children Coca-Cola. <laughs> While they're still young enough to enjoy it. Because <laughs> when they get older, they'll have diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't need multivitamins. You can get all the nutrients you need from the skin of an apple or even a fried chicken. <laughs> AFC offers 11 spices. But my friends, that's neither here nor there. If you take anything from my program here tonight, please take the laptops with you. <laughs> All right, everybody. The Tommy Lama. Love Tommy Lama. So funny, man. So um, Eileen Roseman said, so funny, with lots of O's. Ann Nadal said you're hysterical, and Jackie Sagran said uh, she was crying laughing, Tommy. So read the comments. Woo! And then uh, when you first started, Hortensia wanted to know if you're in a little girl's room. <laughs> 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 I am. I am, yes. Yes. <laughs>